Hello, my name is Dr. Catherine Lucero. I'm an assistant professor of medicine at New York Presbyterian Hospital Weill Cornell Medicine. I'm also a transplant hepatologist at the Center for Liver Disease and Transplantation. Today I'm going to talk to you about screening and management of alcoholic liver disease. So this talk will outline the following. The effects of alcohol on the liver, definitions of alcohol use, screening tests for alcoholic liver disease, and treatment options for alcoholic liver disease. So a little background, the liver is the primary place of cholesterol and fat metabolism. And there can be many stressors of the liver that can lead to fatty changes. This includes alcohol and non-alcoholic fatty liver as causes. On biopsy, normally you don't see fat. So on the slide on the right, you could see these white globules. That's fat in the liver. And what can happen is a normal liver is usually soft and spongy. And over time, if it's either exposed to fat, which we also call steatosis, inflammation, which we also call hepatitis, fibrosis can eventually form, which is scarring of the liver. And with time, the liver can develop cirrhosis from chronic inflammation and scar. Patients with cirrhosis are then at risk for liver cancer. So what are the effects of alcohol in the United States? It's estimated that 136 million Americans older than the age of 18 drink alcohol. And of that, 17 million patients have alcohol abuse or dependence to alcohol. Excessive alcohol consumption is the third leading cause of preventable death, and it kills over 75,000 people per year. In addition, if patients go on to develop damage of the liver, known as cirrhosis, it accounts for 35,000 deaths per year, and it's the second most common indication for liver transplantation. So what is a standard drink in the United States? One standard drink is one 12 ounce beer, or an eight ounce malt, or a five ounce glass of wine or a shot or 1.5 ounce of spirit, such as whiskey or rum or vodka. From the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, it's recommended that women drink no more than one drink per day and no more than seven drinks per week. For men, it's recommended that they drink no more than two drinks per day and no more than 14 drinks per week. So the amount of alcohol is actually very important when getting a history of drinking one glass of wine, what is the actual quantity? Because patients can describe different amounts of alcohol in one glass. Alcohol use disorder was previously known as alcohol dependence or alcoholism, and it's a chronic disease condition. A few of the signs and symptoms that we use to define alcohol use disorder is an inability to limit drinking, continuing to drink despite personal or professional problems, needing to drink more to get the same effect, or wanting a drink so badly one can't think of anything else. So how do we screen for alcoholic liver disease? It should first be done at primary care visits and getting a thorough history on alcohol use, how much, how often, and I really encourage patients to be as honest as they can with their primary care doctor. Because the physical exam might be completely normal in the very beginnings of alcoholic liver disease. Blood tests can be drawn to assess for inflammation of the liver and to also evaluate how the liver is functioning. Urine testing can be done to see if alcohol was consumed a few days prior to presentation. Finally, an imaging such as ultrasound or a CAT scan can look for fat in the liver or signs of cirrhosis, which is the liver damage. The key for treatment of alcoholic liver disease is abstinence. That means stopping alcohol intake completely. With abstinence, there can be some reversal in the damage to the liver and so this is really the key in preventing long-term complications of alcoholic liver disease. If one is able to stop drinking, there is a chance that the liver disease could reverse. So that's why early recognition and engaging in relapse is the most important 
to prevent long-term complications and possible need for liver transplantation in the future. It's not easy to quit drinking, and really the most successful way is to engage in an alcohol relapse prevention program. The most famous program is Alcoholics Anonymous, and what I like about this program is it's completely free, and there are many different programs across the city and country. Depending on the patient, one can engage in private counseling with a therapist, and there are other alcohol relapse prevention programs that are available. In very severe cases, steroids have been used, but the efficacy is very limited and should only be used under the care of a physician. So in conclusion, alcohol use is prevalent in the United States. Once patients develop damage to the liver known as cirrhosis, this is the second leading indication for liver transplant. And patients may not have any symptoms until the very end. As I've shown you in the prior slides, patients with alcoholic liver disease may be at risk for progression to cirrhosis or even liver cancer. And most importantly, abstinence can reverse the disease and it's mandatory to stop drinking prior to consideration of liver transplantation. I thank you for your time.